Hello, welcome once again to Revival Chats. It's my privilege to host. My name is Dan Farrelly, and I'm part of the uh, Bethel pastoral team. I'm here with Bill Johnson, senior leader. It's good to be together. That's nice. And, I uh, like it. Yeah, it's another time when we just get folks have sent in questions, and so we might be all over the place. And <laughs> I, hope I already so. know there's one that's going to stump you. So the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can hardly wait. Yeah. But I'm sure you have every answer for every other question. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, one of the folks that wrote in said that they've heard you say that when we receive a word, um, that a word we receive from God must be tested. Could you expand on this? How do you test this but not operate in a spirit of opposition to the word of the Lord? In the context of that particular teaching, when I say every word is to be tested, I don't mean that we test it. When, when we have a word from the Lord, that word will be tested. It will be opposed. Mm. Uh, Matthew 13, when he talks about when Jesus taught about the parable of the seed and the sower, which is a cornerstone parable, yeah. it affects our understanding of others. Yeah. When uh, he taught on the seed and the sower, he said, when uh, persecution, opposition, affliction arises because of the word. In other words, the word into our life attracts opposition. The enemy doesn't want it to take mm -hmm. root. He doesn't want it to for us to bear fruit. And so he's, you know, the Lord gives you an encouraging word that, uh, you know, uh, you're a great father and you're going to have many, multiple generations of people who follow him. So here's this word uh, given to you to encourage you. Well, the enemy will start addressing, well, but you did this wrong, or well, you, but you did, you know, or, yeah. or well, but look at these godly parents and their kids didn't do so well. So what is he doing? He's opposing the word over your life. Mm. Mm -hmm. And what we have to do is we feed our heart on what God has said, not on what he hasn't said. Yeah. And what the enemy does is he gives us an option, another option besides what the word of the Lord is. This has no power. The revelation has all power. But if I lend my heart to the powerless word, it undermines the word that has power. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. makes sense. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's like we're guardians of what God has given us. You know, we're the only ones with the key to the garden of our own heart. Mm -hmm. And so I have to protect what God said. So the word is opposed um, so that we can see the strength of the word. Mm -hmm. But the Lord mercifully allows the enemy to bring up another option because then we get a reward for our obe obedience. There's mm -hmm. no reward where there's no options. Mm -hmm. And so the scripture, though, so that's the context. Like once the, the word of the Lord is like we've figured out what it is and and that we don't deviate from that. We realize that the enemy is going to bring opposition. Sure, to it. sure. But the scripture passages that say test everything, you know, hold to the good. And then right, in Corinthians right. where let one prophet stand and then another prophet and then exactly. test if it's the word of the Lord. Exactly. Uh, how does that fit in this context? Is well, that's, that's the process we use to come to realize what is from God. Once we've okay. realized it, we, have to, we are obligated to hold to that. We're done testing at that point once, exactly. we've, <laughs> once yeah, we've identified yeah. it. And, and uh, I'm sure this has happened to you too, yeah. where there's certain things that come to you. You know, I, I don't want to sound unbiblical. You don't need to test it. It came so proven mm. that it was from the Lord mm -hmm. that you almost are embarrassed to say, you know, Please confirm. I mean, the yeah. way it came, yeah. such a specific answer to a specific question. The way it came, it was it was so confirmed to you that there's no more question. Yeah. But that maybe would be part of the test: the fact that it has already come proven. Mm -hmm. Other things are good ideas, and they you know they they may be nice thoughts. They might be, and this would be cool if this happened. Mm -hmm. And and we really need to test and see whether or not that idea came from the Lord. If it was really something that He's blessing or not. Mm -hmm. So we take it through that process for sure. But some things come so proven that I, I would feel like an unbeliever to say, is this really you? Yeah. You know, I, I wish yeah. it was everything, but yeah. it's not that way. But, but, uh, so, but testing to see if it's from the Lord, that's an important process. But once you, once you know, don't question from that point yeah. on. Yeah. It's not that he won't answer. It's just it's not a good way to develop trust. You know. Totally. It, it, it <laughs> reminds me of the story of Gideon, which is always a, uh, just such an odd story in the sense of it, you know, the, the guy has an angel come and talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> and the angel just speaks encouragement over his life. Like, yeah. you know, you're amazing. And then he's like, that's not, that's not enough. <laughs> yeah, how do I know this is the <laughs> Lord? <laughs> yeah, I, I was thinking of it too. <laughs> it's, a, it's an interesting story because we... we you know, it's a, a story of the Lord's graciousness at some level yeah, with absolutely. a pretty much an obstinate guy yeah. who, you know, needs lots of signs to actually kind of get into where he's supposed to be. 
you know, like I want you to raise up an army. He's like, are you sure? You know, I'm going to, I don't want to oh, sneak yeah. down. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and the ultimate is he says, uh, if you're afraid, go into the enemy's camp. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so the next scene he's in the enemy's camp, what tells us he's afraid after all these Absolutely. confirmations. Yeah, after the Lord sends us to the weirdest places to get encouragement. You know, yeah. if an angel showing yeah. up isn't going to do it, well, I'll yeah. send you to the enemy's yeah. camp. Absolutely. But, and so he's not quite the model. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a lot of things were, were the Lord just was gracious all through the process, yeah. even though the people didn't do well. And we are in that number too. Absolutely. The Lord's grace, is, grace covers. However, there's the principle that when the Lord says something, you know, he doesn't repeat himself always. Mm. And it's it's the foolishness to think, well, he'll just he'll give me another chance. Well, that's not always the case. Yeah. That's some, mm -hmm. you know, I I'm I love to preach about the second chance and the third chance mm -hmm. that God gives us, and that's mm -hmm. true. But not everything, mm -hmm. not everything comes that way. Some things are too unique and special mm -hmm. to keep repeating op options, mm -hmm. keep repeating chances. They have to be embraced in that moment. Mm -hmm because it's that kind of courage that can contain it once you get the breakthrough. Yeah, so but anyway, it's, it's all part of the, the, the fun process of hearing what he says and then just holding to it, you know. Yeah.